Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today's another Space Marine Day, and we're still reviewing some of the Forge World units that are available to the Space Marine Force. This time we're going to be doing the Dreadnought Drop Pod, doing the review and giving it a Planet 40k star rating at the end of the video. So let's jump straight into the data sheet. It's obviously one of your dedicated transports, and it will require one Dreadnought model that has a wounds characteristic of 9 or less to go inside it. So as for the actual points it's going to cost you to field one of these drop pods, it's going to be 70 points or it's going to be 4 power level. As for the actual stats of this drop pod, of course lots of these stats don't exist because it's a drop pod, but it's got a strength 6, toughness 6, wounds 8, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save. Onto the actual wall gear, well the Dreadnought drop pod doesn't actually have anything equipped, it's got no melee weapon, it's got no ranged weapon, it's got nothing other than the fact that it brings a Dreadnought into play. So let's get away from the wall gear and get into the abilities, Angels of Death, not really much here is going to work because again it's got no weapons and the leadership doesn't really make any difference, it's not going to go into combat so we'll skip over that one. Death from above so it can be using the deep strike ability more than 9 inches away from enemy models. It then has the drop pod assault ability, so the drop pod and the Dreadnought no, inside the drop pod are not going to count as reinforcements and not only that it can come in your first second or third movement phases so normally deep strike units can't come in the first battle round but the drop pods can so turn one you can get it straight in there straight into the action more than nine inches away from enemy models it's got the dreadnought transport ability as well as mentioned it's going to be carrying a dreadnought with nine wounds or less and if you do so it's not going to be taking up a battlefield role which kind of doesn't make any difference whatsoever because dedicated transports you're not likely to be taking loads of them in a space marine force and then finally it's going to explode if it's destroyed on a roll of a six units within six inches will suffer one mortal wound so a very small explosion there but it's still worth remembering. So we've already mentioned the transport capabilities, it's got one dreadnought model that's going to be going inside and it can't be transporting dreadnoughts with 10 or more wounds. So we will go through all the dreadnought options later in the video but to finalise the data sheet let's go through the faction keywords, of course it's got the chapter keywords so it can be used in any chapter, it's a vehicle, it's a transport and it's a drop pod. Okay so there is only one stratagem available to this dreadnought drop pod which is the armour of contempt, you're not going to use it but I've got to mention it as always, one command point to ignore mortal wounds on a 5 plus. You're not going to use it because once it's dropped its dreadnought into play this thing's pretty much redundant anyway. So let's go over some of the dreadnoughts that are available to be taken in this drop pod that have got 9 wounds or less. So first of all you've got the standard dreadnought. I'm not going to go through all the rules and abilities of each dreadnought. This is your basic dreadnought with a strength 12 melee weapon and a choice of either a missile launcher or an assault cannon. So it's just your basic dreadnought there. Next we've got the melee version of a dreadnought which is the ironclad dreadnought because this thing's only got 8 wounds with the dreadnought chain fit or the ironclad combat weapon and that seismic hammer any of those options are pretty lethal in combat so if you want a melee based dreadnought that's your answer if you wanted a better version of the standard dreadnought you can go with the venerable dreadnought again with eight wounds it's pretty much got the same loadout as the standard dreadnought but this time it's going to be hitting on twos and it's also got a six plus feel no pain save too then you've got the contemptor dreadnought with nine wounds either taking the multi melter or the kier's pattern assault cannon and of course the standard the dreadnought combat weapon as well now this one's got the 5 plus invulnerable save so it has a little bit more resiliency when compared to other dreadnoughts that you could take. So you've got the option of the durability with that dreadnought. Then finally you've got the Relic Contemptor Dreadnought which is a Forge World model from the Imperial Armour Compendium book. Again this one has 9 wounds, it's got loads of different customization with the actual weapons and it's got a 5 plus invulnerable save too so it's probably one of the better ones out of all the dreadnoughts there. Now a little plug while I'm talking about dreadnoughts, we have done a tier list review video for all the dreadnoughts that are within the Space Marine Codex so that doesn't include the Relic Contemptor Dreadnought but we did a tier list with myself and one of our Planet 40k members, Aaron. We went through each one, all the rules and we just put them in tier list order so if you want to watch that one I'm going to leave a link in the description and leave a link at the end of the video for you to find. There are also some chapter specific dreadnoughts that are able to go into these dreadnought drop pods. So for example you've got the librarian dreadnought from the Blood Angels chapter which is effectively a character model that is a psyker and also a dreadnought. The Blood Angels also have the Death Company dreadnought which is another melee based dreadnought and they've also got the Furioso dreadnought too so that chapter in particular has got three very unique dreadnoughts that can go in this drop pod. Before going into some more dreadnoughts from other chapters I just wanted to mention that the Death Watch don't really need to use a dreadnought drop pod because they've got the teleportarium stratagem which allows for a dreadnought to deep strike for just one command point so there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to be taking a 70 point dreadnought drop pod 
when you can just use it for one CP. The last chapter worth noting here is the Space Wolves. They've got three unique dreadnoughts within the faction. You've got Beyond the Felhan. He's a character. He's more of a ranged dreadnought, but he still can obviously fight in combat because that's what dreadnoughts do. Then Melee Dreadnought is the Murder Fang. This thing slices things up like butter. And he is also another character model. Then finally, they've got the Wolfen Dreadnought, which is not a character model, but does have access to a Blizzard Shield with a 4 plus invulnerable save. And of course, it's still going to be an absolute nightmare in combat if you're going up against it. So that's all the synergy I'm really going to talk about today. There's no real need to go over the actual chapter tactics of every chapter because it doesn't really do much in terms of range and melee anyway and we've already gone through all the dreadnoughts so let's get on with the summary today starting with the good so it's going to be getting a slow moving dreadnought into close range whether it's for melee attacks or whether it's just for short range weapons such as melters for example you want to be in close proximity to be using those to get the extra damage coming off then of course as well you've got heavy flamers in there too the great thing about a drop pod is it can be used in turn one again normally you need to wait till turn two onwards before you can deep strike in and if you go first you can even potentially take out a unit before your opponents even had a turn which could be massive especially if you're picking the target but even if you don't go first the fact that your opponent knows you've got a drop pod with a dreadnought inside it they're going to have to completely change their deployment tactics and defend and screen what they've got because as soon as you come in you're going to cause havoc so that makes the drop pod and the dreadnought inside a very good alpha strike option now there is one thing that the drop pod can actually do once it's actually delivered the dreadnought into play, it's just to hold an objective. Because after all, it still is toughness 6 with 8 wounds and a 3 plus armor save. And it can hold objectives because it is just a transport after all. And then finally, you can use it to block a key area of the battle. Because you've got to remember your opponent has to stay 1 inches away from all your units. So therefore, you pop this into a key area, maybe even on top of an objective. Pop the doors open and your opponent has to stay clear of it by 1 inch. Unless, of course, they're getting into engagement range of it. But then it's kind of a waste of time for them because this thing isn't really doing much. It's not real threat all it's really doing is holding an objective or just getting in their way now as for the bad it's got no range weapons as already mentioned it's got no melee weapons as already mentioned as well so it's not really doing any damage whatsoever it would be kind of cool if they added some sort of ability for a drop pod when it comes in it could just sort of land on somebody and cause some sort of mortal wounds but obviously that isn't there then of course once it has entered into play it is going to be immobile it's not going to be moving so it's pretty much a sitting duck without any attacks and without the movement there and then finally you can't be bringing a supporting unit for the dreadnought a lot of these dreadnoughts have got the core keyword and they want to be buffed with certain characters whether it's a captain a chaplain all those kind of character options now unless they've got the deep strike ability as well maybe be a captain with terminator armor for example they're not going to be able to buff this dreadnought that easily because the dreadnoughts go in and alone so you just got to remember that one you're not going to be buffing it so easily so before we get onto the rating let's get the shout out of the day done which is going to jdsh i'm not sure if that's josh or just jdsh for his comment on our previous Space Marine review video we've done, and he just pointed out that MKX is actually Mark 10 for the Gravis Armour. I am aware that it's Mark 10, I just like calling it MKX Gravis Armour. But for some people in the comments, they may not be aware that it stands for Mark 10. So as for the actual rating today for the Dreadnought Drop Pod, kind of a bit of a difficult one to rate if I'm honest, because it's not actually doing anything other than bringing a Dreadnought into play, but that could be a massive play in itself. I'm just going to go with an average rating of 3 stars. It does what it needs to do and it can hold an objective. What more are you really asking for with a drop pod there? So guys, that's the end of the review today. Remember to smash the thumbs up and sub if you are new. Also, go check out our Dreadnought tier list video we've done. Link will be at the end of the video, so go check that one out. Thank you all for watching and as always, I will see you next time.